Welcome to the GCN Tech Show with me, Alex. And me, Ollie. It's the final show of 2020, and as usual, we've got your upgrades, the Bike Vault, Snacks of the Week, plus a brand new Cinelli Aero bike, and some bikes that were stolen from Specialized. We're also discussing the big issues, the burning questions. We asked you guys to vote on a load of these in the app, and we're going to answer them. You guys have spoken, including what is the best bike of 2020? Where's your Christmas hat? Christmas isn't over. It's me. not over. It's not over until 1st January. It's not January yet. It's over for me. That's tragic. On to the main talking point then. Beginning with the best bike of the year 2020. What's the shortlist? Well, the shortlist is the Specialized Athos S Works, the Canyon Air Road CFR, the Bianchi Specialissima, and the Villa Filanti SLR. Ooh. Quite a list. Yeah, I mean, what was what did the viewers vote for out of that? Well, in first place, at thir taking 39% of the votes was the Canyon Air Road CFR, newly launched this year. And in its second place, Specialized Athos S Works. I'm a little bit oh. surprised that, that, I thought that might have done a little bit better because I, well, yeah, people viewers seem love, to love lightweight. lightweight. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that the, they would go for the, that over the Air Road, but yeah. um, which would you go for? I would go for the Air Road. I'm yeah. really intrigued to ride it. I've actually not been fortunate enough to ride the new one yet. Yeah. Disappointing. Yeah. Um, also, who created this shortlist? Yeah, I don't know. Was that you? Yeah, unfortunately it was. What on earth are you where's the Where's the tarmac SL7? <laughs> well, I was tight on time. There was only four options available. What about the Canyon Ultimate CFR? We can't have two Canyons in, it's not fair. Oh. Yeah. The list is... Um, but yeah, it's, it's got, got some flaws. flaws. It's got some flaws. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just not dwell on that. What about the new BMC or the new Giant TCR? I said well, I, only have, I only have four options. Well, let us know in the comments what you think the best bike is of 2020. Um, I'm going to say... It might be a better list than I compiled. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably will be. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, there you go. I think that's a win for... Um, the Air Road, anyway. A win for Aero. Yeah. But again, right, next, we asked, what's your favourite cycling gadget? Um, interested to see what the results were here. But, people's favourite cycling gadget from Alex's shortlist. <laughs> There's a theme going here. Uh, was a GPS head unit. Yeah, 55%. That doesn't surprise me, to be honest. That Nearly every cyclist has a GPS head unit. So. Based on that logic, not every cyclist has a multi-tool. No, that... Maybe that does need a dressing. Um, yeah. Um, what would be your favourite out of this list? I mean, I know it's not an exclusive. Um, you know, it's not got everything in there. <laughs> There's very a lot of things missing. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do like. I do like GPS head units. I think they're good. And yeah. you know, I think when you look at the way Strava performed this year, would they release their stats showing how loads of people took up cycling during lockdown, according to their stats? Yeah. And in particular, a lot of a lot of women as well. Yeah, that's actually really great. interesting. Yeah. I did read that and it's, well, for starters, it's great to see more people cycling and especially it's great to see more women cycling. Yes, but it, it certainly that, would you'd imagine, builds into this with the sort of gadgets and people tracking yeah. it and using data, which is cool. Um, right, now, this is this is my favorite question that we asked. It's a debated question, isn't we it? We asked the GCN viewers, uh, which I'm guessing is more than 100 people. At least. <laughs> what is the most important to you, aero or lightweight? But we also asked. <laughs> this is my list again. Sorry, everyone. What is it? We, we can't, how, can we, how can we settle what's more important, aero or lightweight? If you also ask a reliable bike or aero and lightweight are equal. Because I didn't want to force people into just two categories. I thought, <laughs> do you know what? People can have a different view on this, and I didn't want to end the answer once and for all. What are the results then? Right, so. Coming in at the top is Lightweight with 28% of the votes, which, well, it was close with a reliable bike. Would you have thought that? People are more bothered about a reliable bike than being Aero. Yeah, I was surprised by that. So yeah, Aero came in 23%, and then 22% of people thought Aero and Lightweight were equal. Do you know, I thought Lightweight would run away with it, but, um, but it's good to see that our Aero preaching yeah. is working. Although maybe we need to up it a level if we're still only 23% of the vote. Yeah, but if you look at the results from the poll from last week's show, which was, has Aero gone too far with those handlebars? Oh God, those uh, handlebars. 57% said, yes, stop, preserve the aesthetic of the sport. 
So the GCN viewers, although they're coming round to Aero, they do think it's gone too far. Yeah. And what have we got here as our final um, final question which I asked, which is everyone's favourite indoor training platform. And this one was pretty conclusive. Mm. Um, Zwift's taking a storming victory with 80% of the votes. Yeah. Which it doesn't surprise me to be honest because it is super popular, isn't it? It is very popular. I'm a big fan of the Subfest though. I've been using yeah, it the last are, 12 months. Yeah, there are good ones out there, yeah. And, you know, I like the structured workouts and stuff on, on, on that. But for the social aspect, that's where that's the that's the, the sort of USP of Zwift, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. Relative nice. to things like Trainer Road and the Suffer Fest. Yeah. But um, it's worth checking the others out, though. Yeah, it's yeah, cool, definitely. and I think sometimes racing your mates can be a great motivator. It's time now for hot tech, and first up this week, we've got a new Chinelli Aero bike. Check this out. I think it looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's called the Pressure, and according to Chinelli, it integrates everything possible. Not sure what that means, but, uh, but, but there you go. Yeah, yeah. And, and Chinelli got quite a bit of heritage in aero bikes. I mean, the Chinelli Laser, way ahead of its time in uh, 1981. But this, latest creation. Yeah, pretty cool. And it's frame set coming in about 900 grams for an aero bike, which is, you know, all right, really. And it's got some cool little details in this frame, which stand out to me. Best of all, here's a little smiley face on the back of the forks. Just as you turn, exposes a bit of the forks. Little smiley face for you. That is cool. My yeah. favorite detail though is the pressure sticker on the bottom bracket, which yeah. is, and this is where the bike gets its name from. Apparently the people at Chinelli are clearly fans of Paul Simonon from the, the bassist from The Clash. You may remember the, well, iconic London Calling cover um, of that album, with Paul Simonon smashing his bass guitar uh, and it's got a, Pressure sticker on his on his bass guitar. But um, it you, might you not a fan be... of the Clash? Oh, well, not really. No. You're not. Oh, no. I love the Clash. Well, as cool as this is, it might not be quite as unique as you think because wow, it does look very similar to the Strada Atom Six. Interestingly mm. enough, yeah. It's going to be ridden by the Colpac Balan Continental team in 2021, though. Yeah. So keep an eye out for it. I think it's a really nice looking bike, though. Yeah, I think it's cool. Up next, something that you might find interesting or you might not, but Mokoff have actually released aerosol versions of both their wet and dry chain lubes to make applications super easy. So, aero and lube. It's basically your two yeah. favourite things combined into one. You must be delighted. Well, if you say How so. How are you controlling yourself right well, now? Well, I'm just thrilled. Yeah. Just thrilled. <laughs> but something that I did see while I was looking on their website, which did catch my eye was quite interesting, is Mokoff also have this thing called an um, antibacterial grenade, which you can set off in the centre of a room, don't worry, it's not an actual grenade, um, and it will kill bacteria and enveloped viruses within the room. So that's pretty good for this time. A grenade? Yeah. How does that work? Um, well, you just sit the canister on a table in the room, set it off. You're obviously not meant to be in the room at the time, otherwise, well, it's probably not great to breathe all that in. Um, leave it for 10 minutes, and there you have it, a disinfected room. We need to get room. one of these. I think we do need, we need some to of ask these. Muckoff to yeah. send, Muckoff, please send us a grenade. So more, yeah. more than one, preferably. And some aero lube for yeah, Alex. Yeah. Well, next up in hot tech, we've got the Tracker Rear Light. I don't know if you ever heard of this. Haven't. No? Well, it's a rear light that incorporates a tracking device into it. So if you're ever unfortunate enough to have your bike stolen, well, you can track it down, can't you? Mm. What do you think? I guess, that? well, yeah, potentially quite good. Anything that's, that helps catch thieves is good, unless the thieves take the light off the yeah. bike and just throw it in the bin. Yeah, there is a bit of a downside of this, that it can quite easily be removed from the bike. But, well, there's no real reason for you to want to take a rear light off the bike, is there? So, mm. hopefully, it's got a built-in SIM card, which can give you updates of where your bike is, which is pretty cool. And the battery, well, it lasts up to a week. Oh, that's yeah, good. Pretty good. Well, and on the subject of bikes being stolen, it was reported this week that Specialized um, have had a lot of bikes stolen from their HQ in America, with up to $160,000 worth of bikes being stolen, which includes Peter Sagan's Paris-Roubaix winning bike, as well as many other high-profile bikes too. Oh, well, if only they had tracker lights installed on them. Fingers crossed. They would have been, they would have tracked them right down, wouldn't they? Yeah, no unless, unless over a week passed and the batteries went flat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But, yeah, well, if you see any of uh, your friends turning up to a, a club ride in the new year, on a really shiny looking, sort of Peter Sagan painted S-Works Roubaix, then... Um, Be suspicious. Yes. Be ask, very suspicious. Ask questions, because, mm. uh, well... Who knows how they got hold of it. And finally, in hot tech this week, winter training season is about to kick off in full swing. We've all been getting fat over Christmas, eating loads of mince pies and 
Snacks of the week. Yeah, a lot. Of, of snacks. A lot of snacks. Yeah, yeah. a lot of snacks. Um, and yeah, the gyms are going to be rammed. But Wahoo Suff Training has expanded its library of workouts in the uh, Sufferfest training app. This is pretty cool. They've added 31 uh, new videos in there, which are That's a load quite of a lot, isn't it? yeah, a load of That's documentaries lot. that you can watch. And they oh. they said they're trying to like uh, fill a gap within the videos that are already on the Sufferfest with more kind of like tempo and endurance focused things. But there's some really cool things like um, there's workouts that are structured against like Chasing Legends. That's pretty cool, isn't it? You know the Chasing yeah. Legends film? It's the film about Mark Cavendish in the HTC High yeah. Road days. Um, and there's also one about Rowan Dennis doing the the hour record. So it's like some pretty inspirational kind of stuff. Oh yeah, oh, some really fantastic good. looking documentaries. And stuff that's not all pro cycling stuff as well. There's, um, you know, things to do with you know, all sorts of cyclists and riders doing things like, for example, there's an Alavita one, which is uh, about a rider who's paralyzed from the waist down, but is cycling across the, the Pyrenees, 800 kilometers on Very a hand impressive. cycle. Very impressive, Yeah, there's some yeah. really cool, I'm looking forward to doing those in January. So, I, you know, work off all the- Mince the pies. Mince snacks. snacks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More hot tech next week. Time now for snacks of the week. We've got to send some snacks. Check this out. These have come from Sachin Katecha from Nottingham. Thanks, man. This is awesome. He sent us um, some nerds. Wow. I mean, how do you rate nerds as a as a cycling snack? They look pretty cool. We pass um, pass my ones over here. Oh no, this. Uh, he sent two boxes. Uh, this one's addressed to Manon. Sorry, mate. Oh. Sorry, just, okay. just me yeah. and... Um, Don't worry about just, me then. Just me and Manon. Yeah, I'll go without, it's okay. By the way, I mean, these are just pure sugar. It's ideal for cycling. It's just rocket fuel. They look amazing. Watermelon flavour. Amazing. That's the best one. They remind me of being a kid going to the cinema. Is that back, what you used to have? Back when the cinema was a thing. C cinemas have died this year, <laughs> yeah. haven't they? Oh, God. Oh, but they're, they're pretty impressive snacks of the week. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks yeah. for that. Cheers, Sachin. Hopefully we get lots of leftover Christmas chocolate. Time now for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit upgrades and evidence of them that you've made to your bikes, equipment and cycling lives for a chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN Shadow Stand. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the results from last week's upgrade no. uh, because we've been pretty busy over Christmas and uh, myself and Alex actually count all the votes by hand. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's taken quite, quite a while. It's quite a labour intensive job, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, and we don't want any any recounts We normally the triple box. check as well, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll announce the results of this week's upgrade uh, to win the Shadow Stand, and uh, last week's next week. So, don't worry. So what about this week's? Who have we got? <laughs> this week. <laughs> um, Hard Bread. Yeah, interesting. Good name. Better than a name, some of the names that we get. Anyway, yeah. Hard Bread uh, has, has just been getting into cycling, and he's decided to build his own bike and he's sourced an open mold frame. Yeah. Some good ones out there. Yeah. Um, and he's he's designed a paint job on his computer and then he's painted it himself and he's put disc brakes on it, Ultegra rotors. Well no, he's even painted the Ultegra rotors, I think I've seen on this. Yes. Very wow. impressive. Um and he, he's He's got a great deal on a second-hand Ultegra group set on there. He said he got the Ultegra group set for about 100 quid. That's really good. That is cheap. Yeah. That is really good, work. good work. Let me know where you're finding those group sets at 100 pounds. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> and he said he got the SRAM Red crank set with a ceramic bottom bracket for 60 pounds on eBay. Fair He's been hunting the bargains, hasn't he? Yeah, he's just snapping them all up. Yeah, um, and all finished off with Speedplay pedals, a wax chain, and Vittoria Corsa G2 tires with the tan sidewalls. That is... Um, I like the process we've got here of like showing up how he's painted the frame, because there's a lot of masking and painting different colours going on, because yeah, he's, he's done, done the inside of the fork legs, which are obviously a little bit more difficult to Yeah, paint, and the fade he's got going on fade, there. Yeah. And I just love the way that he's gone about you know, really sourcing a load of good parts. It's that Shimano power saddle he's got on there as well. There's been a um, good amount of thought gone into this bike, I feel. Yeah. yeah. He's done his homework. And a lot of shopping around. And it's always good to see this because cycling, you know, if you are a beginner, like Hard Bread said he is, um, someone who's just been getting into sport, it, it, it can be very expensive. Yeah. But this is a great example of someone who 
because of their passion, they've brought the cost, you know, right down and, and created something amazing. Pretty cool looking bike to, to be honest, yeah. yeah. I think the only one thing that stands out at me at the moment, I think the chain might be a little bit short. Yes with that oversized yeah, he's pulley in, wheel thing. He's in the large chainring and the small sprocket and the derailleur cage is stretched already. I'm, uh, uh, my favourite detail is the painted rotors. Because yeah, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that no. before, but you've, you, you're right. In what he's done is kind of right in that there is no reason why you can't paint that fin on the rotor. Yeah. Because that part isn't in contact with the with the brake pads. Um, it looks pretty cool, I think. I think yeah, there's some cool customizers. I think we're gonna. I think you started something now. I think we're gonna see. Maybe more we of see that. some more bike vault. Not bike vault. Sorry, upgrade submissions. With painting, featuring that. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, right, who's he up against? He's up against. Um, yeah, I'm gonna struggle with this name. T pole sack. <laughs> that's as good as we're getting with that, I'm afraid. Um, and he's sending us pictures of his project, which he got as a present for his 50th birthday um, and asked how we thought he did. He had a lot of fun, especially with gluing the tubular tyres on. Um, so yeah, completely different sort of style of bike. We've got quite an old bike, which when it was gifted to him, it, is it me or does it look like it has a car battery on the back of it? The um, red car battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it does have a it, car battery on the back. That, it does look like that, yeah. And the shoes are still attached to the bike. Maybe yes. he's doing a triathlon on it. Maybe he is, yeah. yeah. In a restaurant. So yeah, pretty retro looking bike, um, looking a little bit tired, but he has stripped it right back down to each individual component, cleaned it all up, obviously, by the looks of it, painted the frame as well, because we've now got a yellow bike. Um, sort of, yeah, restored it back to what would have been its former glory. Those, um, that, that bar tape, that's really, that's another striking bar tape choice that we've yeah. got on this one yeah. and the other one this week. Um, that really does stand out, doesn't it? It is impressive. I think that's I think that's a cracking upgrade as well. It's very yellow. Yeah, it almost blends in with yellow wool. Yeah, yeah yes. <laughs> or maybe the wall's white, but it's just appearing it's yellow. The brightness the, the, of the yellow. The, 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 the bike is just like... Both pretty cool um, submissions this week, although very different bikes. It'd be yes. interesting to see how this one comes out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't really call this. No, difficult. Yeah, well, you know what to do. Click on the link down below and you can vote. Who wins? The shadow stand, you decide. Time now for the bike vault. The last bike vault. Yeah. Of the year, nice. wow. How's it, how's it come to this so quickly? Anyway, for those unfamiliar with the bike vault, you submit pictures of your bikes and we judge them to be either nice or, or super, super nice. nice. If they're super nice, the bell gets rung and they get submitted into the bike vault for eternity. And you guys can vote on the, the bikes that we feature as well using the GCN app. But what have we got first this week? We have got Didac 79. Didac 79. Another great pronunciation by me. Pronunciation. Say, pronunci okay. <laughs> <laughs> Highlights it even more, doesn't it? Uh, you couldn't write that. Canyon Ultimate CF SLX rim brake in Movi Star colours. 2020. What do you make of that? Yeah, I really like it, although I was a little bit concerned that it was straight out of the box and pretty much brand new bike. But looking at the chain, I can't decide if it is a little bit dirty, so I think it's not brand spanking. No, I don't think it's brand spanking you looking no. at the spec of the wheels, because I think they're his, an old uh, spec wheel. Just kept the box for it. But a pretty cool bike nonetheless. Um, yeah, wheels not, well, valves not aligned on the wheels. We've got... Tire's not aligned. Tire's not aligned. Crank's not totally level. Not in Biggie Smalls. Not in Biggie Smalls. Chain looks dirty. I mean, yeah. it's so it's close, isn't it? It's close. But just the, yeah, the, it's, it's just the details. Either. We're missing the details. Well, the bike vault is about bike. the details. That is a gorgeous bike. Yeah, I do like that colour scheme. Yeah. So it's just a nice, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Schumer 46, the 46th Schumer uh, with his BH Ultralight. Oh, here we go. Next to a next to a fence. In, oh, it kind of looks like sort of a Mallorca type location. Yeah, that was the first thing that jumped on. A very rustic looking fence. Yes. Um, Quite a cool bike, but in terms of bike vault, a few, few sort of errors going on here, isn't there? Jaunty angle. Yeah. Wheels are sort of not properly aligned. Again, zero thought to the cranks, not even tried to put them close to level. 
I mean, the, the whole bottle inclusion thing, bottles can be left in. That's, that, is, that is a rule that's, that's open but to interpretation. One of the bottles has a red top and the other one has a pink top, unless oh. that is just the colour. So I think he, um, he put one in, in the dishwasher on, too hot a cycle. Yeah. Um, I think that's a nice. Yeah, nice, I'm afraid. I have to move on to the next. Hayden Gutti, we. Yeah, sounds like one I'd pronounce. Yeah. Um, and this is a Fuji track bike oh, from 2005. Track bike. Yeah, I oh, thought it was quite a cool bike. feature, a track bike in here this week. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love is, the way uh, that the saddle somehow completely matches the frame colour. Yeah. Don't know, I don't know, that, well, that's... Yeah, that's proper cool. Looks like a he's sort of custom painted physique Arione or something. Yeah. And gold chain. Gold chain, yeah, careful. Um, I'll tell you what I am struggling to pick out though is Oh no, I can see it now. I was trying to see where the valve on the rear wheel was. I don't understand why he's chosen to take it with the pallet, the pallet. <laughs> there. Why not just use the wall, the nice wall that would contrast perfectly against the yeah. bike? No, well, I'll stick a pallet behind it. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Despite the pallet inclusion, I think it's super nice. Well, he's in the right gear, cranks are aligned. It can be in any other gear, it's a single speed. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, the final bike vault submission of 2020. Can't wait for this. And I've kept this a surprise for you, haven't I? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Are you ready? Scroll down. Lorenzo Bruni 97. What the? F <laughs> yeah, I thought we'd finish on a, yeah, a bit of an interesting one. A, an, a, an Itala Graziella. 1980. 1980. That looks like the kind of thing that you'd try and uh, sort of, I don't know, escape with ET on. It is a folding bike, because each week I like to try to feature a slightly different type of bike. And this one, well, yeah. we definitely haven't featured one of these before, have we? Yeah, well, if you were running away from the government with ET, I was that, just would, about be to say, the, yeah, that ET. would be the bike to use. <laughs> like. Some pretty cool bits on it, though, and it's in good condition, you know. We can't fault the condition of this, because we've got what look like pristine condition tyres. We've got a dynamo light on the front, mm. tidy basket. And that's a folding bike. And it's a folding bike, yeah, it's got Well, a, I've not uh, seen one of those before, from no. memory. Oh, I probably have. Um, very, very polished mud guards. I think it's, I like the white wheels. I like, I like it. I think that's, I, li I like the, uh, yeah, the sort of chrome mud guards and stuff. I do like it, but we cannot give this a super nice, it just would not be fair. The cranks aren't aligned, there's a few sort of emissions with this, but I do think it's a bloody cool bike. You like, yeah. It's the last bike of the year, though. The last one of the year, we've got hung up on this, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, then you lead us in with this. Super what do you nice. think? Super nice. Yeah. I'm being generous yeah. for 2020. Yeah. Oh, come on, then. Super nice. This is the last one of the year. Here we go. More bike vault next, next year. year. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the end of this week's show. This year's show, the last tech show of the year. We'll, yeah. go, we'll see you next year. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I mean, if you order something from the GCN shop now, it won't arrive in time for Christmas because Christmas was last week. But yeah. you'll be super organised for next Christmas. Very, very organised. What are you doing for New Year's Eve tonight? Oh, you know, get cosy, couple of uh, mineral waters, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, pretty wild. I'm going to be uh, eating my nerds. Yeah. Don't Cheers, have them all at once, you'll be up all night. You'll be as excited as Hank was. <laughs> that's, that's probably his secret. Well, we got his nose. Anyway, right. Hope you have a great new year. See you next year. Thanks Bye. very much.